सो टुडे वील डिस्कस द स्पाइनल एनस्थेशिया सो स्पाइनल एनस्थेशिया इज द मोस्ट कॉमनली यूज प्रोसिजर नाउ वर्ड इज सो इन स्पाइनल एनस्थेशिया इंजेक्शन ऑफ लोकल एनस्थेटिक इज गिवन इन द सब एराकोनॉइड स्पेस इन स्पाइनल एनस्थेशिया injection of local anesthetic is given in the sub arachnoid space that is the space between pia mater and arachnoid mater pia mater and arachnoid mater and we call it as a sub arachnoid space and also known as the intrathecal space in the lumbar spinal cord spinal anesthesia right the spinal anesthesia why we call them spinal anesthesia because that injection of local anesthetic is given in the lumbar spinal cord that's why we call it as a spinal anesthesia now particularly in which space it is given in the it is given in the subarachnoid space now subarachnoid space is the space between pia mater and arachnoid mater and that subarachnoid space is also called as the intrathecal space intrathecal space in the diagram or in the picture as you can see here spinal anesthesia spinal anesthesia here you can see this is the space between pia mater and arachnoid mater pia mater and arachnoid mater we call it as a spinal space or arachnoid space subarachnoid space which contains the cerebrospinal fluid which contains the cerebrospinal uh, fluid now spinal cord end at lower border of l3 in children and at a lower border of l1 vertebra in the adults so you have to take care of such things while giving spinal anesthesia you should know the anatomical position of the l3 vertebra or l1 vertebra so spinal cord end at the lower border of l3 in the children and l1 lower border of l1 in the adults so spinal anesthesia can be performed safely in l2 to l3 intervertebral space in the adult and l4 to l5 in children right spinal anesthesia can be easily performed or can be safely performed between l2 to l3 intervertebral space in case of adults and l4 to l5 in case of children now these are the structures which encounter during spinal puncture lumbar puncture or spinal anesthesia in spinal anesthesia you have to use the lumbar puncture needle so these are the structures that you have to cross first of all the skin right then the subcutaneous tissue first of all skin then subcutaneous tissue then there is a supraspinatus ligament interspinatus ligament ligamentum flavum then there is a dura mater and then there is a arachnoid mater so these are the structures that you have to encounter during the lumbar puncture or during the spinal anesthesia or during while you are injecting that lumbar puncture needle while you are injecting that lumbar puncture needle you have to cross all these things one by one here you can see in the picture there is a subarachnoid space but to reach that subarachnoid space you have to cross all these things like skin subcutaneous tissue then there is a ligament supraspinatus interspinatus ligament then there is a ligamentum flavum then there is a dura mater then lastly there is a arachnoid mater right now the drug where it acts it acts on the nerve roots so that lower abdomen and lower limbs are anesthetized and paralyzed so most commonly used procedure for the lower part of the body or during lower surgery lower abdominal surgeries or surgeries of the lower limbs they are most commonly performed 
by using spinal anesthesia the level of anesthesia can be altered by the volume of injection specific gravity of the solution and posture of the patient right the level of anesthesia can be altered how it can be altered it can be altered by volume of injection the volume of injection that you are injecting or the specific gravity of the solution or the posture of the patient right level of the sympathetic block produced is two segment higher and motor paralysis two segment lower than sensory or cutaneous anesthesia this is also important thing the sympathetic block which is produced level of sympathetic block which is produced it is two segment higher and motor paralysis two segment lower than sensory or cutaneous anesthesia right now duration depend upon the concentration dose and drug itself means duration of spinal anesthesia will depend upon the concentration of the drug dose of the drug and the drug itself which drug you have injected at what dose and at what concentration so drug which are used most commonly for the spinal anesthesia is the lignocan which is given 5% in 7.5% dextrose right or bupivacaine 0.5% to in 8% of dextrose these are the drugs which are commonly used lignocan and bupivacaine now what are the advantages of the spinal anesthesia it is safer affordable it affords good anesthesia muscle relaxation is better and there is no loss of consciousness means patient will remain alert during surgery patient will remain alert during surgery it affords good analgesia and muscle relaxation that we need during surgery now what are the various indications what are the various surgeries that we can perform orthopedic surgeries of the lower limb and pelvis orthopedic surgeries means if there is a fracture of lower limbs or pelvis so you can easily perform surgeries of the lower abdomen all pelvic and perineal surgeries like hernia hydrocele appendix testicular surgeries surgeries of the lower abdomen means during all pelvic and perineal surgeries you can easily perform these are the commonly used uh, spinal anesthesia during hernia hydrocele appendix or during testicular surgeries gynecological and obstetrical surgeries also performed like hysterectomy most commonly performed surgeries like hysterectomy myomectomy myomectomy means removal of the fibroid hysterectomy means removal of uterus cervical surgeries tubectomy tuboplasty cesarean section these are the surgeries which are performed under the spinal anesthesia as i told you it is very safe but there are a few complications also of spinal anesthesia hypotension and bradycardia it is the most common intra operative complication during surgery intra operative hypotension and bradycardia and why is it so because of the sympathetic blockade result in venous pooling of the blood because of the sympathetic blockade that result in the venous pooling of the blood and because of that there is a decrease in the venous return decrease in the cardiac output and there is a hypotension or decrease in the blood pressure and it's all because of sympathetic blockade it can be prevented by preloading with the crystalloids during <coughs> or before surgery if you gave crystalloids or colloids or you have to treat this by head low position that is called as the trendlenburg position lots of fluids vasopressors inotropic agents so this hypotension and bradycardia can be prevented then there is a chance of respiratory paralysis hypotension and ischemia of the respiratory center result in the respiratory failure hypotension and ischemia of the respiratory center that result in respiratory failure and it is because of the paralysis of the abdominal muscle cuff reflex is less effective resulting in the stasis of the respiratory secretions that leads to the respiratory infections why there is a chance of respiratory infections 
because of the paralysis of the abdominal muscle cuff reflex is less effective and because of that there is a stasis of the respiratory secretions and that may lead to the respiratory paralysis and uh, respiratory infections now headache it is the most common post operative after surgery most common post operative complication is the headache we call it as a post dural puncture headache pdph post dural puncture headache is most common complication it is mainly occipital headache that occurs after 12 to 24 hours it is the most common complaint of the patient after spinal anesthesia so how will you prevent this uh, post dural puncture headache or what is the cause of this post dural puncture headache because there is a leakage of csf through the hole in the dura mater there is a leakage of that fluid csf through the hole in the dura mater so you can prevent this post dural puncture headache by using small bore needle 25 gauge and treatment of post dural puncture headache consist of lying down for 24 hours you have to give advice to the patient after surgery that you have to lie down for at least 24 hours and you have to give plenty of fluids right now there is a cauda equina syndrome cauda equina syndrome is uncommon it is very unfrequent less frequent because in that cauda equina syndrome patient lost control over the bladder and bowel patient lost control over the bladder and bowel because there is a damage to the nerve roots because there is damage to the nerve roots and that is called as the cauda equina syndrome which is very less or uncommon it may result during sep uh, sepsis is common that may result in meningitis nausea and vomiting pre medication can be given to prevent this nausea and vomiting so pre operatively you can give antiemetic drugs now what are the contraindications for the spinal anesthesia absolute contraindication and these are the relative contraindications means if there is a raised intracranial tension it is the absolute contraindication uncooperative patients in case of shock bleeding disorders or coagulopathy patients which are on anticoagulants thrombolytic therapies or if there is a infection at the local site where you are injecting l2 l3 l4 l5 or if there is a septicemia so you have to avoid spinal anesthesia relative to contraindications like aortic stenosis mitral stenosis if there is a recent heart attack or myocardial infarction or there is a heart block if there is a spinal deformity like psychiatric disorders cns disorders or if there is a spinal deformity you have to avoid spinal anesthesia these are the relative and absolute contraindications for the spinal anesthesia so this is all about the spinal anesthesia thank you